Meatball Talk! Hello everyone! We're Meeple Talk. I'm Adam. And I'm Stephanie. And this week we've got... Monster Lab. <laughs> a 2017 edition. It was originally started as a Kickstarter game last year, uh, and it's published by Ardent Games. And you may have heard the designer, Mr. Liam McIntyre. Yes. Do you know who he is? I believe I do, yes. Uh, For any of you, well, I'm just going to jump right in. <laughs> Go For those ahead. who don't know, uh, if you, well, if you watch television, you've ever seen the show Spartacus, well, that is him. So now, mm. aside from acting, he's now getting into games, and so he created this card, card game for us. Uh, really, what the goal behind this game is, is that if you envision a league of mad scientists, they were once coming together to create the formula for world domination. Somewhere along the way, yeah, the relationships mm -hmm. kind of disintegrated. And so they've all parted ways, but now they're all racing to recreate that formula for themselves. In the meantime, trying to destroy each other and ruin each other's labs as well. So we're going to be taking monster bits from the graveyards and assembling them, mm -hmm. conducting research, battling it out with each other. And either the first to get the formula or, well... To destroy all of the other labs. Exactly. So, the yeah. last to survive is going to be mm -hmm. winning it. So shall we dive into the uh, look of the cards and... Lay out of the game? Sure, let's take sure. a look. Okay, everyone, welcome to the lab. So with every lab, we've got to have, here we go in the components, everyone's going to have their mad scientist. So your mad scientist is going to give you extra features or, or things that advantages that you can have while playing the game. And also every lab is going to start with defense because you're going to be creating freakish monsters. And you know the monsters or hunters are going to come after you. So you want to make sure you have defenses, which equal your life uh that you're going to use to help you stay alive. Uh, while you are uh, defending your lab, at the same time, you're going to be trying to create your sets of monsters. The goal of this is to create monster samples. Uh, you will also accumulate uh, monster samples along the way. It's the other uh, opposing side of the lab defense card. So you're going to want to collect these as well as build monsters. And how you build your creatures. Well, you've got various parts of uh, tops, middles, and bottoms, and you get them from the graveyard. This is going to be your draw pile for your spare parts, but be careful because inside there may be monster hunters that are going to be out to get you. Also, you have a draw pile of lab cards. These may give you extra equipment or other kind of bonuses to help you along the way. Uh, as you build, you also want to sabotage the other players, so you're going to want to attack them. So depending on the strength of a particular monster you send out, you're going to be rolling dice that, or if you're defending, you'll have your defense dice, which will determine how many defend or attack cards are going to be at your disposal for your battle. So the better you roll, the more you have and some options that you've got with that. Uh, also, the dice, well, they also serve another function too because how you get these sample cards are by conducting research. And so uh, when you have uh, a research project on the side, uh, you are going to be rolling your dice and depending on your role as well, it may let you succeed in your research project. So that's generally the overall layout of the components. So let's talk about how a player would play the game. So on every player's turn, and uh, play proceeds clockwise, um, you would start by drawing a graveyard card, and that's how you would get your monster parts. And then you would put that into your hand, and then afterwards, um, you can roll two dice if you have a research project, which uh, Stephanie briefly explained, uh, but I'll explain that in the actions phase. Um, and then, uh, finally, uh, during your turn, you'll have two actions. And the first action could be... Um, first action could be building a monster, so you see how you have these three parts. Um, so in your hand, you would look at your all the parts that you have and say, well, do I have a top, middle, and bottom, and do these circles match up? So there's red circles here and yellow, and then sometimes they're all yellow. And so you match them all up, and if you can do that, one of your actions could be to lay out a monster. And that monster is the equivalent of one monster sample, and once again, when you get five of these, you win the game. Um, so, and then the next... Uh, action that you can take is resupply. So resupply means that you can take a lab card from the top of the deck and that will give you some kind of bonus or equipment that you can use later. Um, or you can go to the discard pile of the graveyard and looking at only the top three cards, you're not going to want that when that gets shuffled back in. Um, but anyway, um, looking at the top three cards, you can choose one of them and put it into your hand. So that's another way that you can get parts for your monsters. And uh, Next, there's research projects. Now, the way research projects work is 
in your hand if you have some monster parts and they don't match up to make a monster but the DNA which are these symbols on the bottom right uh, if they all match up you have three of them of a kind you can say this is my research project and set it aside and then on subsequent turns when you're rolling you'll roll for uh, two dice and if you get three or more of either shields or or these targets and in this case this would be a, a success then you convert that research project into another monster sample so that gives you another extra point there um, finally um, I mentioned building a monster you can also battle so that will take two actions so uh, during your turn now in order to attack let's say this is your lab one of these monsters is going to attack and you get the number of dice equivalent to matching DNA so this monster has no matching DNA so he would only roll one die but this monster here has two matching DNA so he can roll two dice so you roll that dice the attacker will then look for these symbols and however many he rolls or she rolls they will get that many cards to use in their attack the defender does the same thing they can look at their lab defense cards and if they in this example if they have four they can roll four dice for their defense and however many shields they get that's uh, how many cards defense cards they can draw or they can just take the number of cards equivalent to the number of monsters so if they have three monsters in their lab then they're going to be uh, pretty powerful uh, in the battle and then those two players will then draw their cards play their cards one at a time and some of the cards will counter the other cards some cards could destroy a monster some cards could give you a, a, a monster sample, allow you to draw a lab card. So there's all sorts of different actions that may happen there. And uh, finally, there's something called reinforcement. And the way that works is you can destroy a monster and instead take a lab card and a defense card. And that may help you out in, in, in some point in the game. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, but Stephanie did mention that these monster hunters are hidden in the graveyard. And when they do come out, if you, if you pull them uh, on, from the graveyard, then you could uh, lose a monster, you could lose a defense card, you could lose a turn. There's different things that can happen here. But those are all bad, so you want to avoid those. And they get shuffled back into the graveyard, which means they become even more dangerous as the game progresses. And that's the entire game. So what did you think of it? Well, um, this is a very interesting game. It's unique in some ways, I think, uh, just because of the theme. I think this game is very well themed. Um, they add, they added a lot of humor. Um, and, you know, when you're building your monster, you're actually building a monster because yeah. they have a top, middle, and bottom. And depending on how they go together, there's a different kind of like an explanation on the left side about what you've created, for example. And I think these are so great. There's like an orc chieftain in that is always immaculately dressed and won't shut up about it. So that's his story. <laughs> and mine's Captain Blacktooth, the horrible troll pirate who likes to dance and while crushing major cities. <laughs> so these are fun, fun creatures that you're building. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I feel like the, the, the gameplay is, is fairly quick. The game doesn't mm -hmm. last very long. You just have to get five uh, samples and three mm -hmm. of them are your monsters. And as you're playing... You know, you'll see someone who's, who's you know, get, getting into the lead. And mm -hmm. so you can attack them. You can destroy their monsters. There's various lab effects that can be used to destroy their monsters. It's definitely a very lighthearted game. Um, there's mm -hmm. not, like, too much strategy involved. Um, in fact, there, there, there is a lot of randomness and luck involved. But it's that kind of game where it's definitely more of a party-style game than, you know, kind of like your standard board game or, you know, heavy strategy card game, I don't know. But anyway, um, this is, uh, I think it's very well themed. It's got really nice art, um, and, uh, and I think it, it does that really well. It does have some problems, which we'll discuss later. No, you can get into it. Sure, cool. okay, all right. I'll continue then. Okay. So, I would say the one part of the game which is a little bit iffy depending on what kind of gameplay you like is the battle system um, mm -hmm. because you f when when you decide you're like all right you know Stephanie's you know got two monsters and she's got two lab samples we have to knock her out somehow right mm -hmm. so then you want to attack and you think okay attack and then what happens is you start by rolling these dice let's say I have you know two two DNA matching so I roll two dice I might not roll any of these, you know, target symbols. So then 
my attack fails. Now I've lost both of my actions for that turn. So that's kind of nasty, right? <laughs> now, but let's say I roll one or two. I get a card. Some of these cards say, you know, swing and a miss. So basically, then you get a card, and the card does nothing, right? <laughs> so, and then again, you've lost your two attacks. So when you think about what is the likelihood that my attack is going to do anything um, versus I lose two actions. So there's not a whole lot of motivation to attack. And the other thing is, um, usually you're thinking of attacking someone when they have two or three monsters or when they have like three or four total uh, samples and they're dangerous. But when they're dangerous, um, they get a lot more defense cards in general than you get attack cards. And the defense cards can also destroy one of your monsters or cause you to lose one of your samples. So, so it's a risk. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like too big of a risk, but at the same time, uh, battle is the core of the game. So that's kind of, I would consider, maybe a, 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 a balance, or I, I, won't, I wouldn't call it a design flaw, but I feel like it, um, it hinders kind of the most important part of the game, which is battle. But having said that, I think that overall, um, the game has such a great theme, it's, it's, it's fun to play, and, um, and it plays very quickly, there's no downtime, so I think the game has a lot of pluses, and despite the kind of, you know, not very interesting battle mechanism, or I would say, you know, you don't feel really motivated to attack another player because of the way the battle system works, but I think everything else in the game works really well, and I like it. <laughs> and how did you well, feel about it? That's the thing. I was going to say the exact same thing. And so what I'll do is I guess I'll go in the reverse order with the with the I'll continue with the attack piece. Mm -hmm. Um because there were three things that I thought as just major like feedback bits. So the the attack and the defense. Um the way we got these sort of impression is that this game may have now I don't know if it's for sure, but it may have had different iterations where at first it was a monster versus monster dice roll. Okay, so you battle it out, uh, see who wins based on, you know, strength of the creature itself. It, that's the way it feels like it started. And then to get, instead of away from the chance feature, to try to give choice feature, that's where the possibility of cards that you have to work with to then battle and play with each other. So that seemed like layer two. But then with the um, miss cards or the, you know, terrible swing or terrible defense, whatever it was to, or to nullify another, uh, card. Um, that's where it seems to evolve to like a, a third layer where it's the art of the bluff. So now, uh, so in that sense, that's where the clunkiness comes to play. It's almost like in, in for people who there's that debate between whether people like chance or choice, but then there's chance, choice and bluff. Uh, and so that's where it starts to feel a little bit bogged because there's too many layers to get the battle done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that the, would be the main thing. Yeah, and say. the thing is, too, when it comes to the bluffing feature, uh, the success of a bluff or the art of the bluff, a lot of the times that's influenced by the uh, likelihood of a successful result. So when it comes to the um, non-functioning cards. That's the only thing we thought was that there were too many of them where the Art of the Bluff didn't really seem that gripping because, yeah, they could have a card that didn't do anything, but it actually is quite likely that they have cards that didn't do anything. So there wasn't really much risk to either act or just wait it out because you can choose to play mm -hmm. cards or not. And there didn't seem to be that level of risk of, you know, I really got to use it now because I really don't know what they have and what's going to happen. Yeah, and they, she's mm -hmm. mentioning the art of the bluff. And, and what she's yeah. talking about is the, the cards that you have for your attack or defense, you can play them in any order. Mm -hmm. And when it's your turn to play a card, you can even say, I choose not to play a card. And then the other mm -hmm. player then can play another card. Yeah. Um, and what you play may have an effect on what they've already played because you may nullify the card that they played. So they might want to play a card that's a swing and a miss and then you play your nullify and, it, and it's useless, right? Maybe that's the last card you have. So there's yeah. a bluffing uh, component to playing out your yeah. cards. Yeah. And so uh, so that's where we thought the only clunky part of the, the gameplay really came about. Um, the other thing, too, uh, 
rules. We saw multiple versions of rules. Ones that we came with our, our game, and also ones that we looked online. The reason is, is that most cards, they say, you have to play on your own creature. But there are some nullifying cards. Like, for example, Shrink Ray, we've got... What were some of the other ones that you had? Uh, bad Instructions, yeah. Bad so, Instructions. So mm -hmm. these are ones that are supposed to theoretically destroy either uh, the similarity of the DNA types or do something negative to the monster in their certain kind of capabilities that most cards are supposed to be played on your own. And we thought, oh, this doesn't look like one we would ever want to play on ourselves. So it, we think it's supposed to be played on others, but we couldn't get a clarification. So that's something where maybe a rule revise could uh, highlight that. Yeah. Uh, part number three, and this is more of a, like artwork is absolutely fantastic, but part number three has to do mostly with the monster hunters themselves. And this is where the debate of uh, when you're, when you have a card game, it's pretty tough. When you've got that, trying to find the balance of uh, matching the artwork with text because you have amazing artwork that you really want to look at, but we've got the issue where the following text that goes with it is so small that you either can't read it, or if you try to enlarge the text, now you're interfering with the actual image. Mm. So this is always um, like a tricky thing to try to work out. And so uh, most cards, absolutely beautiful. The Monster Hunter ones, mm, they do mm. need a little bit of work just because of the readability. But the funny thing is, is that you know, I would normally think, okay, if there's something funny about a game or something that just doesn't work right, it really hinders the actual gameplay. In this case, it doesn't. Like, I, I, I am so super excited to play this game because if you're the type of person that you just really like imagining, like, how the battles are going to go, even if you're kind of playing with the bluffing and what's happening in the battles, like, you're just kind of imagining yourself, what's mm. happening in the creatures that you're playing with? These are fun creatures. These are, like, the body parts, they kind of mismatch in weird ways or, or just, like, just the type of wordings that they use about what their characteristics are like or what they're actually doing. They are hilarious. And some of them actually give nods to certain other creatures or authors or other things from what you remember from Days When. Um, and so they're just really mm. fun to play with. And I have had um, times where... You might be behind, but all of a sudden in one turn, something magical happens where you happen to yes. roll successfully for your lab experiment. You happen to have enough for your muscles and boom, 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 done. You're in, you're wit, you've won. And so I, I find that it still keeps that level of excitement and fun in the gameplay. Yeah, so this, this is definitely one of those games where there's like sudden upsets and you know, you know, you're losing for most, yeah. most of the game. And then suddenly you get, three, <laughs> you get three samples and you destroy someone's monster and you steal another yeah. one and you win. And, and the funny it's that sort of game. So it's a... Uh, it's a very kind of dramatic... I know, and I'm spilling yeah. over my words right now, but that's mm -hmm. just pretty much because I'm yeah. I'm happy to play this game. And and mm -hmm. I, I just really, really enjoy it. So whenever it does get released, I say, you know what, give it a go. I absolutely... Like, it's a fun one. It it's really a fun one. It is released. <laughs> is that what, what did you mean? <laughs> what did I mean? If you have it it's available you can at buy a store it near you yes. or the capability of ordering it, yes. I say absolutely give it a try because it's it mm. works well mm. with different types of players, different kind of gaming ability. And mm. so I say, you know what? Give it a go. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So my, my I, I, I just want to put in my final thoughts. I, <laughs> sure. Um, I, I've seen a lot of games and I've always loved the idea of a game where you have to build, you know, a robot or in this case, a monster mm -hmm. or, or, or a, a spaceship or something like that. And a lot of games, you know, them. They, they promise that it's going to be cool, but then it's not cool. It's kind of boring or you build something and you don't get to use it. Mm -hmm. um, I think this game um, succeeds in that way because you are building monsters. The monsters are very interesting. It's fun to build mm -hmm. them. The different parts go together in different ways, and you and uh, and you look at your monsters like, yeah, I got my little monsters, right? And then some <laughs> destroys us. Oh, I like that guy, you know? Um, that, to me, is is a success, right? So I, I like this type of uh, building monsters game, and I think it was well executed. So so I, I like this game as well, and I think you should definitely try it out. So, Liam, if this is your first run, I say absolutely keep mm -hmm. on going with it. We want to see more that you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so that concludes us, I guess, for today. And concludes <laughs> the <concluded>. review. Ah! <laughs> Thanks uh, for watching. <laughs> see you next time. See you later.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.